Hello, everybody. Um, God bless you. Right, there you go. <clears throat> right, so good to see everybody. Um, welcome if you're just joining us. Hallelujah. So, yeah, uh, we're just going to share quickly um, for, on this another wonderful broadcast of Revival Hour. Uh, just want to share, uh, just wait for people to come into the room while people are coming in. I'm uh, just going to just share what a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another awesome, awesome opportunity to share your word. And I pray for everyone who is joining us right now that you bless them, strengthen them, encourage them with this word. Lord, I pray that Father, let this word be a word in due season for someone. Let people be edified by the word. Father, I just pray that not be, I will not be the one speaking, but Lord, you will speak through me. Lord, I yield my vessel, I yield my, my hands, my eyes, my feet, my thumb, everything, Lord. I just yield myself to you, Lord, at this time um, to just speak through me, Lord, and just minister your word um, to everyone joining us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So, I just want to share a quick word. God bless you. Welcome, um, Eric. God bless you. So I just want to share this quick word uh, with us. Um, it's entitled, A Defeated Foe. Hallelujah. So we all know that the devil is a defeated foe. This is common knowledge. We preach this, we sing this, we shout it, we, you know, everything. We know this is true. But when you look at the way most believers pray, when you look at the way most believers conduct themselves, when it comes to, you know, spiritual warfare or, you know, when it comes to, sickness or disease or they're facing you know financial pressures or family issues or whatever it is and you see the way believers pray it's almost as if it's like a fire brigade kind of prayer there is no calm collected at peace type of prayer most people pray you know from a place of worry fear and anxiety you find that that most people, you know, when when something begins to happen, they so they, they begin to panic, and begin to fret, and begin to worry. But those are exactly the kind of things that the, the Bible tells us not to be worried. The Bible tells us be not anxious. You know, don't be afraid. The devil is a defeated foe. You know, those are the things that the Bible says. So why is there such a big difference between the life of a believer? The way the Bible says we're supposed to be, the mindset we're supposed to have when it comes to dealing with an enemy, dealing with the devil, regards or you know, contrast that with how most believers pray or when most believers, you know, um, deal with situations in their lives. And the reality of, of, of life is that we are all gonna face issues, we're all gonna face tests, temptations, trials. But how you how you manage or how you deal with that situation determines how or how quick you come out of it or how the outcome you have hallelujah i want to read a scripture to you that has been you know playing over and over in my mind for the past few days it's a scripture in colossians uh, the book of colossians chapter 2 i'm going to read verse 15. the bible says he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Hallelujah. So Colossians 2.15. This is, if you, read the, if you read that scripture in context, it's talking about Jesus Christ and how the, by virtue of going to the cross. Let me read it in context. Let me read, um, let me read from verse 9, just in context so you see the full, full picture of what's going on here. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. For you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. So in him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says we're buried with him in baptism, but we're also raised up with him by the, by through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you, so he raised Jesus from the dead, and he also raised you from the dead. Hallelujah. And you were dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh. 
God made alive together with him. Hallelujah. So he made you alive together with Jesus, having forgiven you or forgiven us all of our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that, that stood against us, which is legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. 15 is where I'm trying to get to. It says, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Hallelujah. So the Bible says very clearly here that the enemy has been disarmed. Now imagine if you are going to fight a war and they tell you that the opponents you are going to fight, they've all been disarmed. So they have no guns, no weapons, no ships, no tanks, nothing. So they're just, just like that, just bare. So he's taking away all their armor in which they trusted. You know, I think another, another translation says he took away all their armor in which they trusted. So every weapon of the enemy has been stripped off him. Hallelujah. So the enemy has been disarmed. Hallelujah. This is the, this is the mindset you should have when you think about the devil. You shouldn't think about the devil. No, most people, the picture they have of the devil is a mighty big devil, you know, who is an equal power with God, who is wrestling with God. <laughs> that is not a picture the Bible paints. That is not a picture the Bible paints. The Bible says very clearly that God in heaven, read Psalm 2, it says when God looks at the enemy and look at the way they, they are, you know, they're plotting and scheming, the Bible says he sits in heaven and he laughs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. It says God sits in heaven and he laughs. Why does he laugh? It's like a child. Just imagine a baby that can't do anything, trying to punch you or trying to hit you or something like that. It's like, seriously, you know, you're powerless. You have no power. You can do nothing. Hallelujah. So the enemy has been stripped of all his power, all his authority. Hallelujah. He's been stripped of everything. So we need to have this mindset. This, it, it, this mindset does not come by just reading one scripture and saying, Amen, and that's it. No. You need to meditate on this word. You need to take that verse of scripture in Colossians 2.15, for example. Meditate upon that scripture. Think about it so much. Say it over and over to yourself. Think about it in so many ways. Ask Holy Spirit to teach you. Say, Lord, what does it mean that the enemy has, has been disarmed and says he disarmed the rulers and authority and put them to open shame. So Lord, what does that mean for me now as a believer that the enemy has been disarmed? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So God disarmed the principal and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold and public example of them in triumphing over them in, in him in the cross. So at the cross of Jesus Christ, every weapon of the enemy was stripped away. Hallelujah. The Bible says he stripped away every single thing in which they trusted. That is why any sickness that tries to come against you is being destroyed in Christ Jesus. So we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. Hallelujah. The enemy and God are not equal mates. They are not on the same level. No. It's, it's, it's a non, it's a non battle. It's like, it's like, seriously, it's like a baby trying to hit you. It's, it has no power. It has no authority. It has nothing. This is the mindset as a believer you should have. Now, the reason why most believers are still being, you know, attacked or still being hit or still being, you know, um, influenced by the enemy is because they've not learned how to use the authority, hallelujah, that they have in Christ. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. So some people or in some places of the world, the enemy has been put on such a pedestal that, you know, they think he's all powerful. So obviously they see the manifestation, they see, you know, witches or they see, you know, um, sorcerers or whatever it is, you know, they see them cast spells on people, you know, in places that are like parts of Africa and Brazil, you know, place like that, where you see a lot of, you know, demonic activity happening and manifesting openly. And people tend to associate and think, wow, the devil is so powerful. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But I want to say something to you. The devil has power, but God has authority over all the power of the enemy. And not just God, but God has given you authority over all the power of the enemy. I want to say to you that authority trumps power any day. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says very clearly to us in John, the book of John 
uh, sorry, Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give unto you authority over all the power of the enemy. So whatever power the enemy seems to have, you have authority over it. Hallelujah. We need to look at the life of Jesus and see how Jesus dealt with the enemy. That's how you as a believer are supposed to deal with the enemy. Not the way, you know, most preachers preach today and tell you that, oh, you know, the devil is so powerful. And they'll tell you to go into, you know, 40 day fasting and prayer before you can cast out one devil. I don't, the devil is not that powerful. Seriously. You know, did you see Jesus do that? No, Jesus did not do that. We see him, the Bible says he cast out devil, devils by a word. He spoke a word and they left him. They left people. Hallelujah. We see him when the Bible says when they saw him afar off, they began to cry out. Why? Because they just can't stand him. Hallelujah. The same way you as a believer, the Bible says you are a co-heir with Christ Jesus. The same way Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, you were also raised from the dead out of your sin, out of your trespasses. Now you and I are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Glory be to God. And the Bible says very clearly in Ephesians chapter 2 that all the principalities and powers are all subject to us. They are all under your feet. Hallelujah. When you see a devil manifesting, realize that he's under your feet. When you see sickness and disease, afflictions or whatever it is, it's all under your feet. That's the mindset. Now, if you don't have this mindset, you may be saying the words, but your mind is saying something else. So you may be casting out, casting out the devil and you're speaking and saying, come out in Jesus' name. But in your mind, you are actually saying, oh, I hope this devil comes out. Oh, I hope this devil doesn't jump on me. Oh, I hope, you know, this, you know. And when you are saying that in your mind and your mouth, you're saying something else, it doesn't work. You know, the Bible says you shall believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, or whatever, whosoever that say, you know, say to this mountain, be that move and be that cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that, you know, he shall, those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. So if you believe that that devil is coming out, whether I liked it or not, and you confess with your mouth, because Jesus has given you authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, Nothing shall by enemies harm you. Hallelujah. So like John has said, the only, of, the only power the devil gives has over you is what you consciously give to him. Either by omission or by commission, you've given the devil power and authority over your life. And that's all it is. So we give the devil the power and authority because we think he has power and authority over us. Therefore, he then influences and uses that against us. Hallelujah. But we need to realize that we have power and authority over the devil. The devil is a defeated foe. I want you to picture this. You know, in, in Jesus' day, when, or in um, Paul's day, when he was writing this, he was writing from the mindset of a Roman warrior, a, Ro a Roman general, who has gone to, you know, gone to battle, won the victory, and when they, when they come back into town, you know, they lead the, you know, their enemies, they tie them, string them up to their chariot, and drag them across town you know, probably naked or whatever it is, you know, they just drag the enemy across town, making a public spectacle. That's what the Bible says. He made a public spectacle of the devil. Hallelujah. So that's the same way, you know, that same picture that Paul was thinking about when the Roman general wins a battle and drags all the other generals, all the other, you know, the, the captives behind his, behind his chariot, you know, through the streets of Rome, and all the citizens of Rome are watching this procession and seeing all the enemies that, you know, were coming against them, being dragged, you know, hands bound, you know, dragged through the street, probably naked, you know, making a public spectacle of them. And most likely the people will be throwing, you know, eggs or throwing tomatoes or throwing whatever it is at the people. So what they're trying to, the picture is trying to depict is that, you know, Jesus Christ made a public spectacle of the enemy the same way you know he defeated the devil and all his cohorts you know string them together made a public spectacle of them in the realm of the spirit that's how you're supposed to see the devil someone who is defeated powerless has no authority over you whatsoever you have authority you have the name of jesus the bible says at his name every knee must bow in you know on the earth in heaven under the earth they must bow. It's not, a, it's not like it's a spiritual law. They, it's, not a, it's not a choice. They say, maybe I shouldn't bow. No, you must bow because the name has defeated Jesus Christ by virtue of his triumph on the cross has defeated the enemy 
All of them. So sin, sickness, disease, the devil, whatever you call it, they've all been defeated by Jesus Christ. And that name, the Bible says that name, there is power in the name of Jesus. So as a believer, that's your stand. That's your authority. You have authority in the name of Jesus. Remember what Jesus said in um, um, Matthew 28, the last few verses. He said, all authority, Jesus came down and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. When did he get the authority? He got it when he rose again from the dead. So God conferred upon him all authority in heaven and on earth. He said, go therefore, make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So when you read the Gospels, how did Jesus deal with devils? You know, he casted them out. Whenever they manifested, out they went. That's how you as a believer to do with the devil. Don't entertain any fear. No fear here. Hallelujah. Love overcomes every fear. So if you are, for example, some people are scared of the devil. This is reality. You know, believers are afraid of the devil. You know, they are scared. You know, they don't want to mention. Some of them don't want to mention the name devil. Because if I mention the name devil, or maybe he's not going to come and attack me. So that's based on fear. Because You know, you don't understand your identity as a son of God. You don't understand the authority you have in Christ Jesus. You know, you you say, oh, if I I start casting out devils now, you know, they'll start, um, you know, they'll they'll start, you know, attacking me, attacking my family. It's because you still don't understand the, the power that you have in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. So we need to realize the devil is a defeated foe. He's a defeated foe. I cannot emphasize that enough. He is a defeated foe. He has no right to afflict you in any single way. And if it does try to afflict you, it's illegal. So you just say, stop in Jesus' name. Out you go. Hallelujah. So when the devil tries to come against you, the Bible says, you know, he will come against you one way, but will flee before you seven ways when you know who you are in Christ Jesus. So the only people who keep afflicting, even as believers, are people who don't know who they are. They don't know their rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. So if you don't know your rights, know your privileges, You'll be, a, you'll be a target for the enemy. He'll just, he's, he's a bully. He'll come bully you. He'll do whatever he wants to do in your life. But when you know who you are, <laughs> he will see you and run off a mile away. Hallelujah. Because he knows this one, this son, this daughter knows who they are in Christ Jesus. And that's who you should be. Look at the way Jesus Christ dealt with the devil. And you do the same. Whenever you see a devil trying to, even, you know, you can go as far as, you know, using your authority and, you know, use it to, deliver up other people as well hallelujah so we need to realize that you have authority by virtue of you being in christ jesus in the kingdom of god when you manifest when you show up in a place you have authority anyone someone you can cast out devils whether they like it or not you can rebuke that devil and to come out of them now they may want it back when you when you leave you know, that's their choice but you have authority you don't even need their permission to cast it out because why this understanding spiritual authority but i'll just encourage you You know, when you see someone being afflicted, you know, don't hesitate. Just rebuke that devil. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Glory be to God. So let's go out there. Use our authority. Realize that you are a son of God. The devil has no right, no power over you. Nothing, the Bible says, Luke 10, 19. It says, nothing shall by any means harm you. This is for those who, you know, are afraid that when they start, you know, praying for the sick or casting out devils or, you know, doing the works of Jesus, that they'll be harmed. But the Bible says very clearly that, you know, God, Jesus said, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing shall by any means whatsoever harm you. That's the scripture. So you hold on to the word of God with confidence, with boldness. Hallelujah. Ever wonder why the apostles were so bold? Even no matter the opposition that came against them, no matter the test, the trials, put them in prison, you know, whatever you do. Why? Because they realized that their fight was not the flesh and blood. They realized that the devil that was behind the scenes, walking through people, was the one trying to influence them. And they were not going to take, you know, back down for the devil in any way. Hallelujah. But because of their tenaciousness, because of standing for the truth... No matter what situation they found themselves, Paul said, I counted all joy. You know, whatever situation they found themselves, he was still counting all joy. Why? Because he realized that it was his fight was not with flesh and blood. So if you are as a believer, someone is coming against you, you know, in whatever way, shape or form, you know, persecuting you or whatever way, shape or form, realize this, that it's not the person that you're you're dealing with. It's the devil 
behind the scenes, manipulating situations, manipulating the people, manipulating whatever it is, trying to make the situation come against you that way. So realize this, that you are a son of God, you are a daughter of God. And the Bible says, you know, the uh, battle not with flesh and blood, but it's, it's with principalities and powers in high places. Cast down every imagination. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about. Cast down imagination because that's where the fight, that's where the battle is. The enemy will speak to you and tell you, oh, you know, you, you are no good or, you know, um, you know, you have no power, no authority or no right to do this in, in this place. But no, the Bible says you've been given the power and authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing, the Bible says, shall by any means harm you. So believe the word of God. Realize this, the devil will try to put thoughts in your mind. That's where the battle is. You know, he'll bring, he'll remind you of your faults. Hallelujah. He'll remind you of, you know, your, your shortcomings or whatever it is. But you need to remind him that my strength, Jesus Christ says, I'm just said, his strength is made perfect in my weakness. So whatever area of my life is not as strong as it should be, I realize that Christ is strengthening that part of my life. Glory be to God. He completes me. Hallelujah. Christ completes you. So whatever part of our life you think that is not, you know, oh God, I don't think I, you know, I'm able to do this because of this or, that or whatever it is. Realize that Jesus Christ completes you. Whatever area of our life is lacking, don't let the enemy use that against you. No, perhaps you might say, well, you know, I'm going through whatever test and trial. I cannot go and pray for the sick because I'm sick myself. That's not true. You can pray for the sick, even while you're still feeling sick in your own body. You can go out there and still lay hands on the sick. Why? Because it's not about you. It's not about you. When you realize this, that walking in the supernatural has nothing to do with you, you don't qualify for this thing. You don't, you don't, you don't earn it from any way. Hallelujah. God bless you, Shirley. Thank you for joining us. You know, so it's not about you. It's all about Jesus and what he did on the cross. Glory be to God. So you realize that the victory is won. The victory is won. The victory is won. Hallelujah. We are not trying to fight a battle. It's not a fight. You're not even fighting in this case. You are enforcing the victory. That's what the Bible says. We are more than conquerors. Because conqueror still needs to go and fight the battle, which means you need to go and fight the enemy. But we, don't, we are not fighting the enemy. We are enforcing a victory that's been complete at Calvary. So wherever we go, we just say, it's done. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus Christ said on the cross, it's finished. So that sickness, it's finished. That infirmity, it's finished. That lack, it's finished. Whatever it is, it's finished. Why? Because I remember the cross. <laughs> I remember the place where it was finished. So we need to realize this. The devil has been defeated at the cross. Your victory is complete. Hallelujah. You have nothing lacking, nothing missing. Glory be to God. Because Christ completes you. Glory be to God. Christ is the one that has finished the work for you. So you go out there. You win all the time. Glory be to God. All the time you're a winner. You go out there and demonstrate Christ wherever you are. You go out there and, you know, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, speak in new tongues, you know, whatever you need to do. Just do it in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Just ensure the victory. Go and do the work of the, of the ministry. Don't take no for an answer. So you pray the first time, nothing happens. Pray again. Hallelujah. Command that thing to leave. Hallelujah. It has no choice. It has no chance because Christ has won the victory. The devil is a defeated foe. He has no right and authority to be where he is. So you as a believer have the right. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ has given you the right. He says I've given you authority, you know, to go out, make disciples of all nations. Teach them everything I've taught you. Glory be to God. So you have the authority in Christ Jesus. Like John has said, we are fighting from a position of victory. We have the higher ground because we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. The enemy is under your feet. Always have that mindset. It's under my feet. So, you know, we are, we are not trying to pray heaven down. We are not trying to come, ask God to come down. No, we are seated with him in heavenly places. Think about it always in that mindset. When I pray for the sick, when I cast out devils, that's the mindset that in my mind, I'm like, it's under my feet, hallelujah. It has no choice but to obey me. The same way when a king is looking at, you know, slaves or subjects or whatever it is, you know, he's not, he's not, he's not seeing a competition. He's seeing something that obeys him all the time. So you are, the Bible says you are kings and priests upon the earth. So go out there, rule and reign in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. So you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have the authority in the name of Jesus. Listen, there's nothing that can stop you. Hallelujah. Nothing, the Bible says, shall be able to harm you. Nothing can stop you if you know who you are in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. So I'm going to just rest my case right there. But if you have a, you have a comment, you have, you know, 
a question to ask, just make a comment, ask a question, I will answer it. So, but fundamentally, no fear, no fear, rebuke, resist the fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but the love both us out of a sound mind. So you have the spirit of love. You have boldness in the spirit. Go out there, cast out the devils, lay hands on the sick, do the work of the ministry, meditate on the scripture. So like that scripture we quoted in Colossians 2.15, meditate on the word. Meditate on that word that says, you know, the devil is, the, he says he's, he's been stripped of all his power and authority. You know, God, Christ has disarmed all principalities and power. So they've been disarmed, hallelujah, by virtue of the cross. Meditate on that verse until it becomes a reality in your spirit. Meditate upon it because it doesn't work by just cramming or, med or memorizing scripture. No, it works when you believe it in your heart. Meditate upon it so much that you now believe in your heart, hallelujah. When you believe in your heart that the devil is defeated, he's under my feet, he has no right or authority, sickness and disease has no, no right or authority to rule or reign or manifest themselves in my life. Or when you see somebody being afflicted, you know, with sickness or disease or the devil, Bible says you have authority to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. So use your God-given authority in boldness, hallelujah, confidence in Christ Jesus. Heaven is backing you up. The angels are backing you up. Jesus is backing you up. The Holy Ghost is with you, backing you up. You have nothing to fear, hallelujah. So go out there, win in Jesus' name. Rule and reign in Christ Jesus as a king and a priest in Jesus' name. So I'm just going to encourage you and leave you with this. But just God bless you. And I just want to pray for everyone who is probably listening and watching. I just want to bless you and pray for you. If you have a need, you have a sickness in your body, I want us to pray for you right now. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for everyone who's watched. And I just pray that they've been encouraged and edified by this word. Power venture, one or two of them are probably, you know, have a, had, have had a wrong mindset of the devil. They thought the devil is almighty, whatever it is. But all I pray by virtue of this word, to realize the devil is a defeated foe. That sickness and disease has been under our feet. The devil is disarmed. He has no power, no authority to, to afflict anyone. Therefore, if there's anyone who's been afflicted by sickness or disease or infirmity, and the spirits that are afflicting them, you know, bound by addictions or whatever it is, I command them to be loosed in Jesus' name. I break the power of darkness about their lives right now. Every devil that is listening, hearing these words right now, I command you, come out of them in Jesus' name and never go back into them in the mighty name of Jesus. I just pray your body be healed. I command healing and health in your body right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father God. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. So God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. In Jesus' name. Amen.